I've always been a problem solver. I still am till this day. And for some reason, I just, I'll never sit there and dwell on the problem. I'm just going straight to the solution. And that's where everyone's missing it. I mean, they spend too much time in that negative state, looking at the problem in a negative way, instead of just fucking seeing all the ways it's gonna work out. From living a life of freedom, to 10 years in the penitentiary, to living the American dream. Hey, I'm Bedros Koulian, this is the Empire Podcast Show, and I'm here with my friend Wes Watson, and we're about to do the inside look. Wes, welcome to the show. What up? What's yeah. going on, Stoked man? Stoked to be here, stoked to be here. So, <clears throat> I was perusing YouTube, and as YouTube does, it starts recommending stuff. And it says something about uh, penitentiary life. And I was like, wait a minute, let's see what this guy's about. And it was one of these experiences where I'm watching you talk and I could see your rage and your anger and I could see how you just want to help people and be a servant at the same time. And that's what, that, that was the golden thread that caught my attention. So explain to me why you're making these videos on YouTube and giving away so much, I guess, wisdom that you've gathered through the penitentiary and beyond. I mean, the biggest thing we could ever do for anyone, this is everybody's agenda in life is to share what works for you on all levels and what doesn't work for you on all levels. What doesn't work is probably more beneficial to everybody. Yeah. So I'm willing to just share it all. I'm willing to be factual. I'm willing to tell, hey, hey, I've been that bitch. I've been that fake tough guy. I've been that guy who walked down the road that he didn't want to walk down and had too big of an ego to walk back the other way like a fucking man. That's an interesting statement there. So Moving forward, uh, or back, I should say, in your story, it starts off in Oceanside, California, which is suburbs of San Diego. Beautiful San Diego, my old stomping grounds before I got married and moved to Chino Hill. That's a spot. That's a spot. This is a spot, man. And you're, you were a snowboarder, skateboarder, surfer. You know, you're, you're touring, getting paid. And at some point, you decide you're just going to sell a little bit of weed, just enough to get yourself some weed for free. How does that all roll into a 10 year penitentiary term? It started off at like 13 where I was, I started smoking weed and I'm like, I'm like, fuck this. I'm not paying for this shit. Like seven grams is X amount of dollars. If I buy every gram for 20 bucks, I don't have money like that. So I'm just going to buy a quarter. I'm going to save up. I'm going to buy a quarter. And I'm that type of individual. Once I have a set plan, I'm sticking to it. Even, so I, even from a young kid? Yes. From a young age. Like I, at 13, I was looking up my credit score. I was tripping on stuff like that to my parents. They're like, like, why is this guy? getting stuff sent to him about his FICO score and shit like that. So, I mean, I was just already, and then, I mean, fast forward like to 15, I'm already at the Cadillac dealership. Like I'm gonna buy this shit the second I turned 16, but I, I just would, I'd buy a small amount, break it down until I built myself up. By the time I was 16, I'm handling pounds. My brother was, you know, almost two years older. So all the older crowd was who I, who I fucked with. That's who I ran with. And they all just bought shit off me. I was just more structured. I was more disciplined. I had more of a vision. My vision was I, I just, I got to have the stuff I didn't have. I got to have money because I grew up and money was our only visible issue. We had love, we had a family, we had everything. Like we just were lower middle class. So money was just the only thing I saw as the problem. So, so you think that was the motivator too, since that's the problem that we have. We have love, we have a house, two parents, but there's always a lack of money. We're always probably running out of money before we run out of month, right? Always. And so you decide that that's the one thing I'm gonna chase. Yeah, that's the thing I'm gonna change. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it better. I can, I've always been a problem solver. I still am till this day. And for some reason I just, I'll never sit there and dwell on the problem. I'm just going straight to the solution. And that's where everyone's missing it. I mean, they spend too much time in that negative state, looking at the problem in a negative way, instead of just fucking seeing all the ways it's gonna work out. And I always just saw the ways it's gonna work out. And it was, it was never doing too many things at once. It was like, let's just get this money first. So I was just, let's just get this money first. And, and I had all the wrong agendas, the wrong ways of getting it. And just was, it was just get money at all costs. So then, just over time that obviously that lust for money, that, that absolute power corrupts absolutely is the truest thing. So me at a young age, driving an Escalade to high school, I mean, by the time I was 18, I was in the new Range Rover. I mean, I just, I always pulled up to Big Bear where I snowboarded in the newest shit. Like I just validated myself through that money. So therefore my belief is that what we validate ourselves within our heart is who we draw around us. So I drew 
horrible people around me who were just about the money, about nothing more. So then I just had this fucked up group of people around me. And then I had my fucked up vision. I was actually creating this fucked up group of people around me. Did you realize it then? And I didn't realize it until about five, six years ago that our true heart's validation of self, what we validate ourselves with in our heart truly is what we teach our people to validate us through. So even the father who is successful and tries to teach his son good principles, if in his heart, he's speaking to his his son heart to heart that money is everything, he is going to create a fucking spoiled little brat. If he's not sitting down and in his, his heart, ver- validating himself with his principles and teaching that to his son, he's going to fuck that shit off, even though he was way successful. So let's talk about that for a moment. And I want you to think back to when you were maybe six, seven, eight, nine, ten, when you start becoming aware that, well, shit, everything's great in our household. It's just money's the only issue. And money is a pretty big issue because in this life you need money for everything. What could your mom and dad have done different to maybe not get you, to not get your greed glands to secrete so much? Could they have done anything? It, it just would have been, I mean, they, they were dope. My dad is the hardest fucking working construction dude ever. Like this motherfucker since like 17 years old, worked every day of his life, like the hardest working dude. My mom was a hairdresser for most of life and then a stay at home mom. But it was just, they were just so young. They, they weren't, they didn't have the time to sit down and gather this wisdom through self-realization and through reflection. So, I mean, the point was, is they just, they couldn't see it. They, the the problem they had created, they were in the too much, too deep in that mindset to even see the solution. Gotcha. So, I mean, the, the point was, is that what they could have done differently now is to, to my dad to sit down and be like, look, I'm a hardworking motherfucker. I take pride in that. I go to work because it makes me proud. Fuck this money. We have a roof over our heads. You be a proud ass man, you know? And that, that's what it would have been. But I get that from him. And I saw that in him. And I always admired him for being a, this dude's like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, like 280, veins all up and through this shit, never even worked out, just solid ass dude. And that's what I always saw in him, how strong he was. And in all reality, that he did transfer that over. But since there is that, amount of always stressing on money, then that was in the back of our heads too. So that kind of created me. I wanted to be big and strong like him, but I didn't want the fucking money problems. Gotcha. Ain't that something. So, so you fast forward, you're driving a big bear in your, in your Land Rover. Yeah. yeah. That, that's on, <laughs> was, was it 20 inch or 22 inch Asante? No, I, I had 22 inch Asante. So yeah. I had the black on black one right when it came out, the 03, the new body. And so Asante. this was what, 15 years ago? Yeah, just fucking. Sh- so th- th- those of you watching and listening to this, 15 years ago, the Asantes, even now they're, they're big, but back then, like Asantes were the wheels. Yeah, they're like 8,000 bucks. Yeah. <clears throat> so you're rolling up the big bear like that. You're obviously making money, side cash from selling weed. At what point do you decide enough is enough? Oh, there wasn't enough. Really? I, I, everybody I know who gets in this position, we're getting packs. We're getting hundreds of pounds at a time. We're getting $3, 300 bu- or like 300 bucks on each pound. So I'm giving half to one person, half to another on either between 100 pounds or 250 pounds. When you say half to one person, half to another, meaning so here, like, you, go so like, it, you go sell it? Yeah, like I know two people and yeah. I'm like, boom, you're getting half, you're getting half. And so I'll break it down between both of them. I'll make 100 to 300 bucks on each pound, depending on the quality. And I mean, on 200 pounds, 100 pounds, 250 pounds, I'm making 40 to 60 to 80,000 a week, not counting a week, a week, but not counting that this fucking shit is uh, they're they're growers pounds. So they're coming from up north or they're coming from British Columbia. So they just have their their they're they're judging for the weight because they they ship them kind of wet. So they're judging for it to dry. So they're little little over. So when I go through each one, I have like a mailing scale and a trash can and I put the trash can on the mailing scale. I put the fucking pound in. It comes out like one big nugget. I put it in. I'm like, oh, you know, 456. So then I take the eight grams out of it. I throw it in a bag. By the time I go through 100, 200 pounds, I mean, I just made 30 grand. And, you know, an hour and a half, I blew through like five vacuum sealer, food saver uh, sealers. But I mean, <laughs> by the time I went through it, I fucking, I had made enough that night to where I go tell my people like, hey, let's go to the fucking club or so. Just when you make that much money in a day, you have to go spend 10% to fall asleep. You're like, it's like you won the lotto, you know? Explain that. I mean, just, that's just how I felt like back then. Like now I'm not like that. I can spend nothing after having a good day. But I mean, when you have these drastic jumps of income, it just itches at you to where like, 
say one day you make 80 grand, you're like fucking, man, I, I just have to go buy something right now. So I just always would go, we'd go to the clubs down here. It's funny how I lived downtown again in my old stomping grounds. This was always a dream of mine when I was in the pen to be back down here. Now I'm back down here better. But the point is, is um, we would go to the clubs and buy Cristal and Dom P and act fucking balling. We didn't own fucking nothing. We, I had a lease option to buy a house that I was paying into. Yeah. And it, I mean, it was dope as fuck. It was 1.5 mil. I had a condo down here. I had like 30 grand worth of bills a month, but no way was I going towards what you speak about, which is generational wealth. I was not thinking that way. That's fascinating. So let me ask you this. Do, do you believe that uh, looking back, you were looking for some kind of validation? So you're making all this cash, 40 grand a week on average. And so you had a great week Let's go spend 10%, 20%. Are you looking for validation from your peers for from just being able to blow money and people to go, wow, who's he? What were you looking for? I'm, I'm glad you went into that because I still fucking do it to this day and it fucks with me. Like I'll even, like even buying the car I have now, like do I need that? I mean, I'll always tell myself I do, but I'm honestly doing that at a slight bit for people to notice that I have some sort of success. And that outward validation, it will always just fucking leave you empty. Like you, it, outward validation is directly linked to expectation. So, I mean, the people who seek outward uh, validation, like look at my house, look at my cars, look at my shit, look at me. They're always linking everything in their life to expectation and expectation will always leave you empty. It will always leave you unfulfilled. I don't care what area of life it's in, that expectation will fuck you over. So my, the point is, is I live, I do that in small areas of my life and I don't know if I'll ever fully extinguish it, but I mean, it's, it's like this compared to how it was like. Sure, sure. You spent a lot of time in the pen. That's one of the reasons I'm interviewing you because there's not a lot of people who spend that time. And it, from what I understand, there's a second half of your term in the pen that you really start to become more self-aware to not play the victim. Of course, yeah. right? And so, so let's chalk it up to five years of the 10 years that you become self-aware that you start researching and maybe I'm the cause of all my problems and not the man and not this and not that and not other people. God, I hate when people do that. So since you had all that time to, to, to become self-aware, what do you realize about yourself that others can also take away? Because w there's entrepreneurs today and the reason we're doing this show, this is obviously a show for entrepreneurs, startup entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs that are making a billion dollars a year and everywhere in between. Like literally we have the entire audience. And so I see so many people insulate and isolate themselves with money and they stand on their money for a sense of validation and confidence. At what point did you realize, fuck, this is what I was doing? I mean, while in the pen, the start of the penitentiary, when I came in, I was just always the person who says, I can beat the best, best at shit. My self-talk has always been solid. I've always been positive. And my self-talk has always been strong enough. Where does that come from? Where does positive self-talk come from? It, it, comes from uh, it comes from wins. So, I mean, when you wake up in the morning, you have a choice. You have a choice to get the fuck up. And if you get the fuck up, you got one W under your belt. Now, if you eat that meal you're supposed to eat, now you got two. If you're supposed to, if you go do that workout, now you got three. If you're used to stacking fucking wins like mm, I do every mm, day, mm, mm. you build that self-talk because every time that win takes place, you're like, I fucking do this shit. I can do it. It ain't shit. I always do it. And 15 times a day that I'm always hitting these steps, then another step comes in. I'm ready. Motherfucker, give me more variables. Oh, business-wise, give me more variables. And we know that stress management is the fucking key to your success in business, in life. And so, I mean, the true cap that caps everyone from growing anything is their, their stress level. So stress management is everything with that. And that just comes from your confidence. So you don't get stressed out if you're confident, right? right? So, I mean, I'm fucking confident as fuck because I make myself do these small tasks. I'm all about fucking base hits. I'm not about that home run shit no more because that's like wishing upon a star. This is out of my creation. Every little base hit fucking leading up to that fucking straight championship. Stacking the wins. Stacking the wins, that, that's it. So as you became more self-aware and you realize, holy shit, I'm gonna get out and I'm gonna, I'm gonna live a better life. I'm gonna be an entrepreneur. I'm guessing you chose to be an entrepreneur. I've been, I've, I would never have chosen anything else my whole life. I've so always- So you knew coming out of the pandemic. My whole life, since I was born, I'm like, I'm never working for anyone. Fuck this, I've never had a job. The only job I had, never had a job in my life. The only job I ever had was in, in the penitentiary for two days. I worked for 28, or like 28 cents an hour or eight cents an hour, something crazy. What, what happened? Why in the days? kitchen. I said, fuck that. Take my TV. Take my shit. I ain't doing this shit. 
<laughs> I'm laughing because I love your intensity. Oh, I just that. love your I'm, fucking I'm not fucking passion. doing that yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. They, they told me, we'll take yeah. your TV, we'll put you on C-Stats, we'll do this, we'll do that. I'm like, fuck you, get the fuck out of here. Like, the two days I went there, I literally, like, I went, like, sat in the corner and was like, when are those pancakes going to be done, dude? And they're just, everyone's like, fuck you, you have to do something. Like, you have to help us with this shit. I said, that's for you guys, dude. I don't, I don't do that shit. Like, so you knew you knew early on, obviously, as a kid, if you're looking at your FICO score, that yeah, all right, I'm going gonna, gonna to be an entrepreneur. It's under my control. I'm going to earn. All right, so you get out. You know that you're going to do this. Why did you decide that you're going to help people with their health, fitness, mindset, wellness? The, the helping people thing is just, I fucking have always been good at everything. I've always been able to pull off what I'm trying to pull off, but it never did anything for me. I call it being happily dissatisfied. I've been that way my whole life. I'll always be that way. The only thing that really does anything for me is when I can do it for someone else. So, I mean, the, the whole point is, is everybody always wants to like fucking applaud what's already made, you know? But I, I just see like fucking, I just see so much more in creating something else. Like just the ability to, you know, just true wisdom is seeing the miraculous in the common. So, I mean, if you can see something in someone who's so common, you see their vision for them, you see where you can take them, that's wisdom because you're, you're creating a path for them, you're seeing what they're capable of, you're saying, hey, motherfucker, I was there. The person who can't see someone else's path is not in touch with himself enough to say, I was fucking there, because everybody was there, except that person with the silver spoon in their mouth, which I don't know nobody like that. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 so you become this, this guy that's helping people with their health, fitness, wellness mindset. And we all know that that's the first domino. Like, your marriage could be falling apart. You can't do anything about it if your wife's not down to fix it. Your business could be falling apart. And if the economy's jacked and you just can't do anything about it, the one thing we can directly have control over is our personal mindset and our health and fitness, what we eat, how we train, and, and the thoughts that occupy our minds. And so I'm curious why you choose to go that path, considering you seem to be a pretty selfish cat who was trying to acquire all this money to the point that you found yourself in the penitentiary. Well, in the penitentiary, everything's stripped of you. So you have nothing else, but the only way to truly validate yourself, it was cool because look it, here I am a motherfucker looking for validation from others like I always was. But in the penitentiary, the only way to get validation is through your mind, body, soul process. Oh, that motherfucker's always up. Yeah, he's ready. He's a soldier. Mm -hmm. Oh, that motherfucker works out hard, man. That motherfucker's it. And then that motherfucker makes sense. He makes me want to get it. So through the process, my mind, body, soul process, I could get that validation that I was desperately seeking as that drug dealer, as that outward validation speaking, seeking motherfucker. Now I could get it in a way that's benefiting both. Now I get my validation. I'm strengthening myself, mind, body, soul through this process that we know works. And then I'm just, I'm pushing it on to others because I'm so fucking, that, that's what people don't get about fitness people is they're like so passionate about pushing fitness on you because they know something, it works and they, they really want it for you. And, and people who aren't into fitness see that in a negative way. They're like, no, no, until they try it. And then they're like, shit, that did work, you know? And the point is, is um, I was able to get the validation I was seeking as a drug dealer, as, a, as one of the, someone of that ill got means nature and then be able to turn it into a positive and help people and then still get my validation which i mean is it the best way i mean we're always seeking validation of some sort so i mean if you can make it benefit everyone else and yourself and not be detrimental to others well then then i guess we found the best route for it sure enough so i'm going to ask you a loaded question and this is something that i got from one of your youtube videos he said, dude comes in and he's like, hey, man, this is my anti-anxiety medication. Oh, yeah. And someone took it away from him and he's like, you now no longer have anxiety, motherfucker. Tell me about that. Well, I mean, in the pen, you can't take meds. So, I mean, the why? point, why, the why, point why, why? is, well, because you're a liability at that point. In so what way? If you're someone who needs, uh, needs psych meds yeah. or any sort of, we call them like hot meds, but they're psych meds. If you need fucking psych meds, well, then you're just, you're a liability. Like you're just. Because you're weak? Well, because you're weaker and you're just, you're not the, and. The whole thing is, is in the most part, in the pen, people who need psych meds are way the fuck off. They're gonna cause a problem for the whole race. So if you're white and you roll in, I'm accountable for you. If you start a problem with a cop, I have to go fight that cop with you. If you start a problem with another inmate, I have to go fight that inmate with you. There's no questions. We're not gonna sit there and debate it. Oh, so-and-so was, was wrong and so-and-so was right. No, 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 that person hit a white person. Bam, we're in, we're in on it. That cop hit a white person or that white person hit a cop, bam, we're in on it. So we have to just negate these issues from the start. No psych meds. We have to see who the fuck you are. You, we're not even going to have that liability around. There's another place for you. It's not here. You're gone. 
Like the whole thing is, is if you're on psych meds, if you have mental issues like that, you're gone. And the point is most people don't need that shit anyways. They don't. That was my next question. So do you think once you guys strip this cat who believes that he needs psych meds yeah. and antidepressants and the Xanax and all that oh, shit. Oh, those aren't even anything. Okay. And what do you see? Do you see just a normal human under there? Well, you, you just have to build them up through some real shit. I mean, the whole thing is, is everything that ails us in this life was current, was instilled in us through creation that we could fight that internally. So anytime you're having anxiety, what is that telling you? You have pent up energy that you have to go exercise off. The funny thing is the answer to most of this shit's gonna be fucking exercise. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing is, is why is someone anxious? I mean, they probably ate some fast digesting carbohydrates. They probably had some caffeine and their bodies and they're telling their body, I want all this energy and they're not fucking doing anything with they're it. They're not burning it off. So, so they started in a negative mindset in the morning. They created this process of asking for energy with their, what they, in, they took in and now they're just sitting there. So now their negative, their negative mind is bouncing around all these ideas in their head and they have all this energy. And when in all reality, they could have just went into a workout, flipped that, used all that energy, gathered that PMA from the workout, looked at the same problem in a completely different perspective and changed their life. I'm, the exact, I'm that exact person, but I flip my mindset because I, I get up in the morning because I know I'm negative. I'm inherently negative in the morning. So I flip it. Look at it. Don't look at anything of life until I'm in that, that state of PMA. Still, I'm in that positive mindset. And then I look at my problems. And so I only find the solution after years and years and years and years of only being in a positive mindset, because you know not to get in that negative one and you know how to reverse the negative one through exercise. Now you always fucking just look at all problems in a positive state. You don't even enter that negative one. So over time, you've created that habitual construction. Visual construction. And by the way, guys and gals listening to this, PMA is positive mental attitude, which we're going to come to in just a moment. So now I'm going to bring you out of the penitentiary. We're going to talk about everyone out here on social media and the real world who's having anxiety, who can't get out of bed. They're white knuckling through life. They're stressed out, overwhelmed, suffering in depression. silence, depression, depression. How much of that in your experience, because you, you've seen the real world, because once people are stripped away of their medication, stripped away of their social media devices, how depressed is society really? I mean, honestly, people aren't going to like this. Depression is a selfish person's disease. If you played a depressed person's self-talk on a loudspeaker, you'd be like, fuck that person selfish as hell. I need this. I'm feeling this way. I don't know why I can't get out of this. Uh, I'm not feeling great today. Is everything about you? Are all your thoughts about you? Check it out. Wake up tomorrow. Think about how you can better serve everyone else but you. Guarantee you fucking forget about you in general. So the one thing I say in my book is every morning you wake up, you have two sets of shirts you can wear. One says, how can I serve you? The other one says, what can you do for me, right? That, that's it. And really what you're saying is the people who are living in anxiety and depression in this life outside of the penitentiary are really the most self-absorbed, selfish people. That it's all about me, 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 me. They go inward. As soon as they go, how can I serve you? How can I serve him, him, her? Maybe, just maybe, I'm gonna get some positive validation, positive feedback and feel good about myself. How can I serve you? Abundance, I mean, when they're worried about themselves with depression, that's that victim mindset. That's that scarcity. So why do you think in your experience, and I know you're not a doctor, you're not a therapist, I'm just talking about your experience because what I really love and appreciate about you is in your 36 years on this planet, you've put in, you've gathered a lot of wisdom because you've done a lot of work. You know what I mean? You've done a lot of work. You've done a lot of shit. In my 45 years on this planet, I've gone through a lot of shit. I've, I literally was born into communism, we escaped, we come over here to the United States, I'm bullied, I'm sexually molested, like all this shit happens to me. And I grew up with a chip on my shoulder, fire in my belly and rage in my eyes. And I believe I've got like 200 years of wisdom that I've gathered in that short amount of time. And I could see that in you too, as I watch your videos, do the research on you. So again, with that said, you're not a doctor, you're not a therapist. Why do people automatically lean towards medicating themselves instead of saying there's got to be a non medicinal way of dealing with this anxiety and depression. What's your thoughts on that? I just, everyone rushes elsewhere instead of rushing inward and, and facing their facing themselves. Their pain is where all the solutions are going to lie. So, I mean, on the other side of your pain is where all your answers are. Nobody wants to face that. They can easily get distracted. Fuck it. Fuck it. It's getting too painful. Pill. Fuck it. Fuck it. Everything's too painful. <sighs> Fucking everything's too painful. <sighs> like you were about to level up if you didn't grab that vice. If you didn't use that substance, you were about to find the answer. They're just always shutting it off right before they find the answer. When you're stuck in a cell by yourself for months, there's no shut off button. You, you got to just find the answer. You got to do so, it. With so the it's voices. like, Hey, check it out. 
you're, you're gonna have to seek within right now. There's no way to find the answer except, except that internal reflection. Here's what I got from that. Whether it's food, alcohol, drugs, as in recreational drugs or drugs prescribed by a doctor, yeah. you're really just numbing the pain because you're not dealing with it. Just escaping it. You're escaping it. You gotta face it. And so, you know, we're not gonna talk about entrepreneurism. Obviously you're now an entrepreneur, but, um, and you're doing really well for yourself. Beautiful place here in San Diego, you know, overlooking downtown. Uh, great business where you help literally hundreds of people through your coaching program, mental, physical, um, nutritional. So I wanna go above and beyond that and go back to the prison for a moment because there's so many parallels that I found as you talk about prison on YouTube, uh, whether it's a chow hall or whether it's the racial divide. And I'll go through the comments and I'll see people say, say well, Wes, you're a racist. Like, let, let's, let's address that. Cause you just said something right now that's like, hey, if you're a white guy and you go berserk on a cop, I'm white, so I gotta back you up and go berserk on that cop. How does that work? That's how the system is. I mean, it's, it's out of protection. Like I can't, pol you can't police everybody in prison. So you group up by race and you police your own race. So, I mean, police ain't the, the real best word, but I mean, you're governing your own race. It's a dictatorship, not a democracy. So your own race, you're telling them what to do. And that's the, only, the best way to control all the problems is to control just your people. Anybody else, I don't have any say over, but my people, they're listening. That's it, they have no choice. They have to listen. And the point is, is this is just, this is the politics, this is the structure, this is what works. I mean, in California, there's so many less problems than the other states because of this reason. Now, any other race cannot come touch me. If another race comes up and tries to even lay a hand on me or talk to me in, a, in a, some sort of combative way, here comes my 20 people. They know that they have to fight 20 people instead of that one guy. They're less likely to cause a problem when they know they have to fight 20 or 40 or 60 or 150 people opposed to just picking on one person. So it keeps the preying on individuals out of it. They can't do it. Hmm. There's no preying on a, a one select individual. You're protected by your race, but therefore, you have to put in work for your race. You have to earn that protection. So you're gonna have to do certain things that most people would sit, would just say they don't wanna participate in, but there's Can no they choice. Not? Can I opt out and not participate? No, you're participating. There's no way around it. If your general population, like my channel on YouTube is, G uh, GP Penitentiary Life. So if your general population inmate in California, you have no choice, you're participating in anything your people ask you. If they ask you something, if I ask you, hey man, hey, hey, Bedros, hey B, you, you, you gotta go, you gotta go book this dude. He's a chomo, you, you gotta handle this shit. Like there's no fucking way around. I'm not gonna ask you twice, this is it. And you're like, you just think, oh, no, I can't do that. I'm going to catch like five years and shit. Well, you're getting stabbed. You're getting what, what we're asking of you. If we're asking you to go beat some dude's ass and you don't, you're going to get your ass beat. You're not going to get stabbed. But I mean, the point is, is you're going to get what they're asking you to do if you turn it down. Wow. And, what, a, what an interesting way to create structure in, in what otherwise would be a really fucking chaotic environment. It'd be chaotic. Because right? there's just not enough guards and cops to, nah, nah, to nah. help. And from what I understand, most don't even want to help. No, they, I mean, the, the whole point, sometimes they watch it. They, I mean, it becomes trivial to them. But I'm, the whole point is, is um, it makes them work real hard. No, nobody really likes to work hard. So, I mean, the second there's these, these uh, political things or these disturbances and shit, that's a massive task to separate 80 blacks and 80 Serenios and 40 whites and keep them fully separated in different places and feed them and house them. That is a massive undertaking. So, I mean, it just they almost like the politics. We police ourselves, there's less problems. When there is a problem, they know what's gonna happen because they know the rules. Like, like, you can't bring that dude in front of that dude. He's fucking, it's gonna go up, you know? So they, the cops or the, the prison guards abide by those rules as well. Oh, everybody's seen them. Because it mean, keeps peace. Yeah, I mean, it, it fucking, uh, it keeps order. It's politics. It's, it's, it's fucking, uh, it keeps the order. I mean, other places is anarchy. So, so let's, uh, let's again, I wanna, I wanna talk about this because a lot of people think that they have their, their nice cars, their nice homes, their social media devices, all the current outfits and clothes and all this shit, yet they feel imprisoned, they feel life is unfair. How shitty is it in prison? What happens on day one when you go uh, into a new prison? I mean, not only the mental aspect and the torture of fucking just like not knowing what's coming next. Like, so always, that's always a thing. Like, even when I'm transferring from one facility to the next, I'm like, fuck, how are the showers set up there? How am I supposed to, because everything takes a, like a different, like approach. So 
to shower correctly. You're gonna have to bring your shit. You're gonna have to bring your shoes. You're gonna have to set them up here. You're gonna have to use this shower. You're gonna have to walk this line. You're gonna have to go this way. You're only use this one at this time with this person. And so, I mean, everything's like such or such organization that you'll stress out about the smallest shit. So once you're entering prison in general, even people who watch my fucking channel, they're like, fuck, I'm gonna have to stab someone. So they're getting off the bus for their first time. They're like, Wes said there's a bell. You're gonna, they're gonna ding if I'm a PC. I mean, if I if I choose to roll with the black What's ding and PC? I'm white. What's PC, protective custody? Uh, protective custody. If I choose to roll with the, with the blacks and I'm a white guy, I'm getting stabbed. Like everything is so fucking taboo and so fucking just split and segregated it's tripping everyone out because they're like what if my black friend rolls up i can't say what's up to him like shit like that is fucking uh it's always going through their heads but the daily life in prison i mean three fucking trays no fucking protein i'm gonna make your ass work out hard as fuck every day no days off why you have a wake up time because you're a soldier you got to be ready for it to kick off i need your wind up i need you strong if you prove you're not an asset you're gone you know let me just explain to you guys and gals watching and listening to this when he says you got to have your wind up if you don't know what that means you got to be cardiovascularly fit because when it kicks off and what that means is when it, when it's about to go a, a riot or a race on race you can't be the one being a liability, being trampled on. They need you fighting. Everybody's got to be able-bodied. And that's the thing is we're not giving no one no fucking breaks. And that's the validation I go back to. Let's see who's a fucking man. That's why I love, I'm not saying I love prison, but that's why I love the challenge of life, of business, of prison, of this, of that. I went into prison and said, I'm going to be the best at this shit. Nobody looks like me in prison. None of them. Okay. There's no white boys walking around with a bunch of veins fully ripped up and I don't give a fuck about the look. It was the work. So motherfuckers who always look at someone's external appearance and they don't see the internal principles that built that they're fucking tripping. I see someone who's fit. I know what that takes. I know the sacrifice. I know the discipline. I know the commitment. So I know who that person is. It's more trusted. I mean, is that every case? No, but I know what it takes. And so that that whole challenge of creating something that that is past you hitting that wall consistently. Those are the people you want around you in the pen. And so me rolling up, I'm just a noticeable asset. They're like, fuck. Okay. I'm covered in certain ink that says I'm someone front and I've done my work. I've done my shit for my people. And then I, I look a certain way. I'm a lot bigger than most white dudes. I mean, most people in the in prison come in off of drugs on the street. They don't look like us. They haven't been squatting. They haven't been training. They don't even know what a macro is. If you have the, the whole point is, is Fuck it. It just, it, it's a massive challenge to say, hey, look it, look it. We're all here. We all have nothing. Let's see what the fuck we can make. I mean, and I'm going to ask you something. What I'm hearing you say, if some dude comes out of, uh, again, let's, 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 let's think about why you went into prison. You went into prison for selling what's absolutely legal today. Like I can go into a shop and pick up all the edibles and all the smokables I want right now. You went to prison for that, which even 15, 20 years ago was a joke. You, you, anyway, that aside, the fact that you can articulate so well and explain this. So if someone comes in and they're, they're you know, hooked on heroin, so they're thin, wiry, emaciated, they're not thinking straight. I'm hearing you say that prison almost becomes a self-development program for them because of the structure that you've created or that, that the prison system has created. With the right people around, with the right uh, leaders around, yes. But with the wrong ones, no. Because, I mean, the point is, is once they come in, they're going to have to work out. They're going to have to do all this shit. But we know functioning addicts. So, I mean, once you hit the main line in prison, everybody's on fucking drugs. Everyone's strung out on that black. What's, what's the main line? So the main line is GP, like once you've General hit a real population. prison yard, you're yeah. not on reception, you're not at county jail, you're on a real prison yard, like the fucking movies, day in, day out, same yard, same fucking cell, same people, same tray, same food, and then fucking everybody's on the same drugs. Everyone's, it's the same shit. It's just a smaller fucking real world, but just real concise. So the dudes who are going to the dope man every day out here, they're going to the dope man every day in there. And the point is, is most dudes are strung out on black, which is heroin, and, mo and a lot of dudes are on, on that speed on that white and uh and the fucking those are the two main drugs and the thing is is that they'll just function at a low level so i mean they're gonna have to do their workouts they're gonna have to do their shit and then that's where politics get fucked up because now if someone has some money and they have some drugs the dude empowers a bitch and he fucking sells out all our principles for some drugs well, now that can fucking that can start to poison the system anytime when i've ever been a shot caller anytime i've had a block anytime i've had a yard anytime i've been a leader I was always like, motherfucker, I see you using, you're the first up to bat. So anytime 
someone's using, they're cleaning up the drug problems. All problems in prison, 98% of them are drug debts and drug problems. Mm. So you're like, okay, why'd that problem happen? Or why'd, you, why'd that white boy get his ass beat today? He was laid on his drug debt to the Southsiders. Now he, now he got smashed. Who'd he get smashed by? He didn't get smashed by Joe Blow, who's in here doing his time right. That other fucking dope fiend is handling that shit. Ain't that something? And then you move that lifestyle right into this world. And again, 98% of the problems that people have are usually out of some addiction to a vice. And the vice could literally be television. It could just be binge watching television, ignoring the stuff that they're supposed to do with their family, their faith, their finances, and their health and fitness. Um, so so if, if you had someone in front of you right now, because what I'm hearing you do on your YouTube channel mostly is seems like you're talking to maybe like the younger kids who might be at a fork in the road because you're really trying to get kids um, um, or maybe adults to stay out of prison. What, who is it that you're talking to? What's the message that you're trying to share? You're doing well financially. Why are you doing this now? I mean, is chronological, is chronological age ever the sign of emotional maturity? No. Never. So, I mean, the 65 year old motherfucker may be just as well developed as that 14 year old, yeah. maybe, maybe vice versa. But the point is, is chronological age doesn't matter. Emotional maturity is something that I'm trying to pass on. Emotional maturity gained through fucking extreme accountability, just straight up accountability. Motherfucker, how did you feel after you did that? Be honest, you know? And, and everybody has a conscience, but why am I trying to help everyone so much? Because I feel like that's our path. What works for us in life is our path. People are like, what's my vision? What the fuck worked for you? They're like, I don't know yet. Well, then start working. And the point is, is that's what you do. You, your, your path is what worked for you. You're a business coach. You help people build businesses and you're a businessman. And so, I mean, the point is, is what worked for you is what your path is going to be. And what, what works for us is what works for us on all levels, mind, body, soul. What's the biggest precursor of the of the mind body soul process is we just gain inner peace so what are we always after we're after that contentment we're after that inner peace and we're we're avoiding well that's what life is that's the whole point of it people think going somewhere means something or doing this massively cool thing i've been on that beach and i felt like shit i've been in the penthouse and i felt like shit i've been in a cell by myself and had complete inner peace that's how i know That's how I know that that's what we're after. Wow, that's an experience, guys, that we can't get, that we can only get through his experience. And I know you said in a recent video you put out that if you would have to live, I don't know, three or four lifetimes to try and experience every single thing in your life, the best way we're going to get knowledge and wisdom to be able to become the best versions of ourselves is to learn from others. And for you to say that you've been in a penthouse, you've been on an island, and you've you've had this chaotic experience, but then you've been in a prison cell, and you've had complete inner peace. Where does that come from? To prison cell for 14 months at a time, not one foot out, not one foot out to shower, not one foot out for nothing, not medical, nothing. A tray coming through the slot, sitting in there for over a year, multiple times, six months, eight months, but the longest stretch, 14 months, never stepping out of a cell. But the point is, where does that come from? It comes from your process. So I'm out here to tell everyone it's the process. The process is gonna put you in the right frame of mind. It's that morning fucking process process. We're not nocturnal fucking creatures. You get the fuck up when the sun gets up. You go straight into your morning process. A great healthy meal, some vigorous exercise, some reflection. Done. You're set for the day. What you do with that is you ensure that throughout your day, you have the character that you wish to fucking possess. You have your thoughts in line. I'm going to be kinder today. I'm not going to snap when those fucking dipshits get in my way. We all know what's going to happen. The same shit happens a lot. When that dude cuts me off, I'm not going to freak out. When fucking, uh, when I do start to get in a slight argument, I'm going to compose myself. Everything that's your issues. Notice how all mine are anger related of me snapping at people. But anyways, the point is, is um, that process is everything. The getting that correct mindset to look at the problems, to, to search inwardly, to create and unmake certain habits that we that are not desirable to us. All right, so tell me about this then, since you openly admit that your factory installed default is anger and negativity. No, it's bad. Right? Rage and negativity. Yeah. Yet you talk about the consciousness and the witness. Witness, strong witness. Tell me, tell me about that because whether it's anger and negativity or whether it's self-loathing or whatever it is that our people watching this and listening to this are experiencing, how can the witness and the consciousness help? Well, I mean, okay, so first you gotta understand that you're never gonna unmake your negative traits, but you can use them in a positive manner. I'll always have these triggers, but how long is that window open? Or how long is that, that anger window open is where my strength lies? I'd imagine the Buddhist monk gets pissed off 
I'd imagine shit pisses him off. But his window of being angry opens for a minute second and closes because his witness is so strong, he watches it take place and then he closes it right away. Now I'm getting better to where maybe my, my anger window is about, is open up X amount compared to his minute opening. So I mean, understanding that you'll never unmake this, a quote from uh, Aurelius out of uh, meditation, something I'm reading right now, straight, not straightened. You'll never be straightened. That's the problem everyone is after. Right. They're always thinking that one day they'll be permanently fucking happy or they'll be permanently not angry. Motherfucker, you just get better at controlling it. And the thing is, is a lot of people see this as anger. This is more like my Lewis Black comedy. I'm not even pissed off. Right, right. But I mean, the, the thing is, is um, it's just, it's basically, and it goes back to one of my favorite quotes of from uh, Jordan Peterson, is that a, a, a great man is not a man who's who's just a kind, calm, normal man. It's a man who's capable of extreme violence, but he willingly foregoes that. So I'm on my way. You're on your way. And so the witness, the consciousness, when you're going through, just walk us through for a moment. You, you wake up and you're just like, fuck, this is a bad day. You're negative, you're angry at something. You didn't sleep well, maybe you had some weird nightmares that triggered you and you're angry. What does the witness or your consciousness do as you're going through these emotions and how does the self-talk go for you to shut that window? Well, I base it on everything on being and becoming. So a motherfucker who's shallow, he goes to the gym to acquire, to possess a look. I go to the gym, I get up early, I live my process on a basis and a thought, a, a magnification in my mind of being and becoming. So if I slept two hours last night, perfect. It's gonna be hard as fuck tomorrow. I wanna to be stronger, right? Harder's better, right? It is. So therefore, being and becoming. Oh, today's gonna to be way harder, perfect. Oh, you're sick today, perfect. You wanna level up, right? You, you appear pretty tough, pretty strong. Here's your motherfucking chance. Why does, I don't give a fuck how positive someone is when everything's perfect. How positive are you when you're in that cell for 14 months and nobody's written you, you haven't seen a family member in 10 years, can you be positive then? I bet not. But it's something you have to build up to. So the point is, is motherfucker, don't ever shy away on that day that's impossible. That was the day, that was your chance to level up, you almost had it, you bitched out, my bad. I'm here to tell you, don't bitch out, go every day. This is the reason, being and becoming. Let's just say that one more time because that was so powerful. So when everyone else says, well, I didn't sleep good, it's raining, it's cold outside, I didn't get a chance to eat, but I got a bad text message this morning, coming up with a multitude of excuses why they can't go and work out or whatever, your rebuttal to, I can't, I didn't sleep well, it's raining, it's cold, it's, it, I'm sick, is perfect. Here's a chance for me to deal with more adversity, good. to suffer further so I can get stronger. Good. Why do you believe that suffering and pain is a solution to growth. Oh, because adversity introduces a man to himself. So adversity is gonna show you who the fuck you are. And more importantly, who you're yet to become. Mm. So I mean, the point is, is, oh shit, I'm still a bitch right here? Oh, okay, well here's my level up. This is who I'm gonna be in the future. So it's almost like your crystal ball. It's your window to who you can become. And that's what people don't get. They're too focused on the acquiring. Like, but Wes, how long till I get a fucking six? Shut the fuck up, dude. You'll get the six pack when you earn it through trying to become stronger. You're becoming stronger by, by not negotiating with your weaknesses. If your weakness is diet, well then guess what? Level the fuck up, attack the weaknesses, quit magnifying the strengths. All too often I see the dude with the Rolls Royce in the titties and I'm like, motherfucker, what the fuck, dude? Like, okay, you got the money already. Work on the other shit, homie. Like, you're not fooling anyone. Good point. So, so you're living a good life now. I mean, we're in your, we're in your condo here. We're, again, overlooking downtown, beautiful day. How, how do you keep yourself going? Because we'll see people that'll hit that glass ceiling. Hey, I'm living a good life, making enough money, stashing some away. How do I continue to challenge myself is what they ask. You, you're always, okay. I mean, the point is, is success is going to be it's gonna be its own, I mean, suffering from success is the realest shit. Motherfucker suffers from success. That's what America's based on basically in my eyes right now. Yeah. A bunch of people suffering from success. They have it so good, they become so fucking soft. So every level of, um, every level of success I'm gaining, I'm equally matching with self-inflicted adversity. So I'm knowing that this is gonna make me softer with all this shit I got. It's gonna, it's gonna try to edge its way in, but I'm gonna get up earlier 
I'm going to have a harsher day with more variables because I am successful and I got a lot of shit going on. Good. I wanted more success, but then guess what? Good, more shit. I'm never gonna be that dude who's gonna shy away from the actual work that has to be done because I know that's what's gonna save me. So I mean, always being like the main shit, being the mind, body, soul process is what's gonna put you in the correct state of mind to see everything correctly. Gratitude is always gonna open the door to, to higher intelligence, to infinite intelligence. So I mean, you're gonna get your answers there. So I mean, the answers are gonna come when you work for them. People want answers without working for them. Sure. Motherfuckers ask me questions. I said, go work for that shit. You'll learn it actually. Morning routine. What does your morning routine look like? Morning routine, get the fuck up, 2.45. Go straight to some quick digesting protein, quick digesting carbohydrates black coffee, Folgers, right into a book, something that I can just get one quote Why out Folgers? of. Why uh, Folgers? The prison shit. I just, I, I'm so fucking cheap. I'll just, if, if I'm going. You know what I've realized uh, since watching your videos and learning? So prison life and then section eight housing life where I grew up in, in the ghettos of Santa Ana. By the way, so you want to talk about segregation? The Mexicans and the blacks are fighting when we come from, from the Soviet Union into Santa Ana and we're living in section eight housing. And all of a sudden I'm the foreigner kid they stop fighting and they start beating me up and my brother, right? And, and so the more I hear you talk about this, because you said Folgers and all this shit, like that's the stuff we grew up with because that's what they give you at Section 8 housing with your food stamps too. Uh, but okay, so Folgers because of prison life. Yeah, Santa Ana's grimy. I know, those streets are just yeah. battling each other. Why, it, it's gotten better it's over grimy. the years, but back in 1980, 85, it was, it was pretty nasty. Okay, but um, so, so just, yeah, right in some Folgers. I just, I like it quick and cheap. I'm to the point. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to get, get myself right where I need to be. And I, I like, I need caffeine. But um, that's probably my only vice. I don't even see it as a vice, so whatever. Um, could I do without it? Uh, no. But, but anyways, the, the point being is... Uh, Have you gone without it for a period of time? I've never. I've ne I'm not going to even try. There's a, what do you... <laughs> <laughs> but, is Wes Watson getting soft? Yeah, yeah. But I've, I've, been, I've been on the Folgers for fucking since the penitentiary. And, right, you got and, no choice. Yeah, and, and so on. But I, I mean, that's, that's just what gets me right in the mode. I'm, everything's got a purpose. Yeah. So, I mean, from the fucking morning, if you're choosing purpose over pleasure the whole time, I mean, I could have a fucking a French press with my creamer and my favorite shit with my favorite coffee. I'm purposely choosing purpose over pleasure all fucking day 245 purpose get there fucking handle business make sure i'm earning that strength by forcing myself up at an ungodly hour so what time do you wake uh what time do you go to be bed then it's it's between fucking 7 30 and 10 30. like i don't really have a set scheduling to go to bed because i get uh i get just a lot of messages and a lot of the work's endless as an entrepreneur yeah. and starting a corporation so i mean the the point is it works endless so I got to make fucking money. I got to keep the damn lights on. But anyways, the, um, the point being is uh, I just... But I, you wake up at 2.45. Yeah, 2.45, straight into some quick digesting protein, quick digesting carbs. Coffee. Get Everything's purpose-driven. I'm not getting up and having my favorite anything. Just to the point of yeah. what my body needs to get done, what I got to do. So, I mean, when we've consistently made choices throughout our morning, when we're choosing purpose over pleasure, when it was fully our choice, now we're rewiring our mindset. We're rewiring our mindset to reward ourselves for purposeful acts over pleasureful ones. After doing this for an extended period of time like I have, pleasure almost has a downside because you see it not getting you where you want to go. You're like, okay, pleasure, I've actually, I've actually correlated pleasure with regression. So, I mean, if I'm going out and, and doing something pleasureful, I'm regressing away from my goals. So, if I'm ha having this meal that tastes so fucking good, I'm regressing. If I'm going out and partying and drinking, which I ne haven't done in seven fucking years, then I'm regressing. And so, I mean, in all reality, what I've come to know is there's only two stages of life, and that's, pro that's, that's progression and regression. There is no stagnation in the universe. Right. All right. Well said. So, after you have your Folgers coffee then... And we know everything is purpose driven and not pleasure driven. What do you do next? Okay, Folgers coffee. And then I, ha I pull open a book. So anything that's gonna just give me like some sort of gem, some sort of just, some sort of motivation for the day, something. And I'll just flip through, usually a quote book. So I like quotes, they're to the point, they get the wheels turning. So I just want something that in invokes like some strong feelings in me. So it's always, it's always gonna be like a deep quote that hits some sort of pain. I like pain. Pain is what gives me the most motivation, emotional motivators far surpassed superficial motivation. Just looking at that fucking car. Oh yeah, whatever the fuck, the abs. Oh yeah, superficial. But when it's, when it's a, an emotional motivator, that's truly the source of your untapped potential. So, I mean, I listen to music that, I listen to music that draws out pain in me. 
that, that, music, that song that brings you to tears before the gym is weird to listen to, but it's going to make you stronger than that one that makes you want to dance at the club. Yeah. So, I mean, the point is, is I just look for something that's going to truly bring out that pain in me. So either a quote and then I hop in the car, I listen to some music that, um, that is, it's always the sad shit. I always pull out the sad shit with the chick singing where there's, what uh, was the most recent one you listened to? The recent was like, uh, like black bear. Like one, it was like one where the dude's breaking up with his chick and sure. this and that, or like some Halsey or something. But in the pen, I listened to like Adele. We only had a limited selection. Yeah. So I listened to like Adele that would like, I'd be in fucking like streaming tears. Bro, down. Adele pulls at the heart. Man. It, it, dude. Adele, she pulls at the heart. Hey, tears streaming down my face listening to Adele doing sets of 30 handstand push-ups, just vibrating and just at a level that people could feel fucking 20 feet away. My frequency is just out of this world, and I'm just, I'm ultimately powerful right there. I'm in, I'm in the zone. All right, so you're reading the book or the quotes, and then what happens? I go to the gym. So then I go to what the time? gym. I go to the gym. I'm there by about 4 to 4.15, 4.30. Every morning, 13 years straight. So... I take more pride in the consistency than the result. That's what everyone needs to really fucking do. Take pride in the consistency. Take pride in the fucking, the comprehension of the task more than they do the fucking result. But Wes, we live in a world of results. We want outcomes. We want, we want results. But the consistency and the comprehension get the result. So, I mean, if you're only focused on the result, if you don't get it quick enough, you're going to tap out. And no one's going to get it quick enough because the result's always getting further and further away from you. The result is always changing. It's always growing as you grow. So the point being is I never chase the result. I chase the principles. I like the process. I like the pain. I like the fucking, I like who I'm creating. I like the, I like the comprehending the task more. I like to live in it. And the point being is that, um, I don't give a fuck about the result. I keep getting the result and it doesn't do shit for me. So haven't I learned by now that fucking a week after I bought the car, it was still the same as the other car. All right. Fair enough. So let's go back to prison for a moment. What's roll call? Roll call. I mean, roll call is going to be in the shoe. Roll call is going to be when you call out to your people. And in the what morning. is the shoe? Okay. The shoe is a segregated housing unit. So this is when you, the prison inside of prison. So when you get in fucking trouble, you stab someone, you beat the shit out of someone, you get caught with drugs, you go to the shoe. Is that what they call solitary confinement? Solitary confinement. But you have a celly because it's so overcrowded. So, I mean, if, if you're not some weirdo, you're going to have a fucking celly and you and your celly are going to have to get up at a mandatory time, which is usually around different places, three to 4 a.m. But before they run showers or do chow, you're going to get up. You're going to tell your people on the tier of the building that you're up. They're going to call out. They're going to say fucking they do a, like a, you know, a big verbal call out to their own people. The Mexicans do it to their people. The whites do it to their people. And everybody answers to show that they're up because we're stuck in cells. You can't see if someone is or not. So there's accountability by voice, by sound. 100%. So and that's, then, and that's what happens. Sorry, that's a, that's the roll call in the shoe. But then, um, so then we get up and we start programming. So we'll start working out. We'll start getting ready to go to the yard, or we'll just start just showing that we're up, showing that we're not weak, showing that we're ready to live. I mean, the point is, is that's gratitude. They're teaching to be grateful. The highest form of gratitude is to get up and live your fucking life, to get up and live that day that is not promised. So the highest form of gratitude to me is to not say, I don't want to get up today, motherfucker. What if you didn't have the opportunity? Right. Would you say that? Right. What's hooping? Oh, hooping. Yeah, a lot, a lot of my videos, a lot of my videos talk about hooping. These guys, these guys are laughing so much. Yeah. A lot, a lot of <laughs> you my, knew it was coming. A, a lot of my videos talk about hooping, and, uh, and that goes along with roll call, because roll call sometimes is, um, is papers. So papers getting passed around with everybody's name on them that we're checking to see their charges to make sure they're okay to be around. So why don't you explain that for a moment? Because I don't think people watching this, and, 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 and listen, I know an entrepreneur. He's a, he's a dear friend of mine. Uh, he, he fucked up. He, he crossed that line into the gray, crossed that line and way past the black and uh, was selling pretty much sugar pills and saying that they cure cancer. And after about making $30 million off these sugar pills that he claimed uh, cure cancer, the great state of Tennessee took everything away from him. And um, he now lives in Texas. All that said, it's very easy to find yourself in a prison, whether you were just selling weed or you were accidentally trying to solve cancer with sugar pills. And I don't think people realize what really happens. And so when you're, when you've got your paperwork, you're going to a new prison, like you have to hoop that, which is what? 
Well, who I, I would hoop it. You don't have to. You don't have to. But that, that's the main way of showing you're with the business. That, that's showing that you're a regular. You fucking get how it works. You get the, the fucking, the, how important it is to have your paperwork. So your paperwork's your charges. So I'm going to have my fucking charges on a piece of paper. It's usually a 128G, which is a CDC form. It's going to tell everything I've been busted for, everything that I've, like, any sex history, any crimes, anything that people want to know about you to know if you're a fucking weirdo or anything like that. So the point is, is I'm going to bring my paperwork in my body cavity, which that's hooping is. I'm going to stick it up my fucking ass. I'm going to, I'm going to roll this shit up into a little piece of uh, cellophane, real small. And then I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hoop it. I'm going to put in some rubber gloves and I'm going to, I'm going to shove that shit up my ass and then I'm going to hop on the bus so that when I get there, all the new ass motherfuckers show up and they're at a new prison and they're like, Oh, uh, uh, my paperwork's coming. It's in my property. And then I roll up and they're like, okay, yeah, I've, I've heard of Wes. I know this fool knows what's up. He's blasted. He's a big dude. I, I could tell. And then uh, they're like, what's up, dog? And I'm like, yeah, give me a second. And I just go retrieve my paperwork. You know, I'm not going to give it to him with fucking shit on it, right. uh, but I, I'm going to have the shit fucking ready. I'm going to come up. I'm going to hand it to him. They're going to be like, bam, what's up? Boom. It's just the utmost respect. So me being something, the way you do anything, is the way you do everything. Mm. So me being some thorough motherfucker, like I've always been, like I take pride in the thoroughness of myself and the, the amount of respect I give people who are thorough, I'm thorough. I'm not, I see the fucking holes in how people are acting. And so I'm like, oh no, no, no I'm gonna come correct. That's, that's what I want people to do. I want people to fucking, to see the problems and answer their own questions of what shows, their, shows respect to the process. Even if it's their job out here, fill in the fucking gaps. You'll get the raise from filling the gaps more than that piece of paper that said you're good at your job. If you ain't fucking pulling it off, I'm gonna fire your ass. So, so really you're building your reputation the moment yeah. you show up because you're saying, look, man, I came, I came prepared. Here's what you need to see to know what category of life I fall into here, right? And so what's a chomo? A chomo, a child molester, the worst fucking type of person on this planet. I mean, uh, that's that's one of, the, I'm always super fucking like, oh, forgive people, be understanding, not with that shit. Anything against children, fuck that shit. So the point is, is you come into prison, these guys are missing their families, their wives, their children, everyone, they're, they're, they're never gonna see them again. And here you were out there, you hurt some kid, you raped a woman, you're dead. You're fucking dead, your, your life's gone, they don't care. They're missing their, they're, they're crying every day. I'm getting the chills. They're crying every day about their family. And here your fucking ass is hurting children, women. You're done. Mm. I'm going to take your head off. Mm. And it's a rule. I don't give a fuck if you agree with it or not. If B comes in, if, ba if Big Bedros comes in, I don't give a fuck. Check it out. Your celly's a chomo, fool. Slide that piece on your door. Handle your fucking business. That dude's head better be separated by the time we come out to chow. He better be just fucking stacked up by the door. But that's how it is. Like, we don't give a fuck. Okay, don't, don't handle it. We got you next. You're next. So you're either doing it or it's getting done to you. Doing it or it's done to you. Yep. You got one choice. Yeah. Really kind of draws a very clear picture of how good we have it here, no matter how bad we have it out here, doesn't it? I mean, when you're living prison life, and that's the picture I wanted you to draw, was that how you have to show up, the shit you have to do. One thing you even talked about is even, even in your cells, you guys have what you call driveways. Like, you know, like you, someone else isn't gonna come through your driveway. Ex explain that, how, how the tiniest little things matter from the way you take a piss, the way you take a shit, the way you enter your cell, because I wanna draw the contrast when people say that they have a bad life and they're having a bad day, like explain what a normal life is so so then even in uh so like a level two like a level two prison is where the driveway is going to count but even in level fours level threes there's certain ways you can only walk you can't walk certain ways there's certain paths you have to go down so you have to fucking everything's of order if you're black you cannot walk over here and if you do we you're coming for a problem and it's done like we're going to give you like two seconds to like retrieve something. Like if your basketball comes over to our weight pile and you come to grab it, we're going to be like, what the fuck, you know? And most people won't grab it. They'll let you throw it back to them. So, I mean, that's the level of respect. But I mean, the driveways being at like a level two where everybody lives in a big dorm because there's level twos, level ones. These are big dorms. Level threes, level fours, that's cell living. So, I mean, the cell living still has a fucking a day room, which is a, a communal space where everyone inhabits. So, I mean, in that communal space, there's walkways, there's tables, there's certain shit that only certain races touch. This is the whites, southerners, and paisas tables. This is the blacks, the nortenos, and the, and the, the others tables. 
So I mean, others being like uh, Asians and shit. So, so blacks, others, Nortenos, Southerners, whites, and Pisces over here, everything's split. You come over here, there's a fucking problem. And so, I mean, the point being at the level two, back to that, the driveway, you can have where you walk to your bunk. Here's, here's my bunk, here's the driveway, here's a black on a rack. And so the point is, is how do we do this? How, how do we use this area correctly? So some places I've been, he only comes into his area through this side, never through our side. So we have our own issued areas. And then in some places it's gonna be fucking, um, it's gonna have to be used. So, I mean, everywhere's kind of different, but the whole thing is, is everything's segregated by race. You're not using that fucking toilet. That's a black toilet. You're not using that shower. That's a black shower. And the segregation is real. Wow. That's crazy shit. Really want people watching and listening to this right now to realize how good you have it, even if you're having the worst day. Your wife left you, your dog died, someone got diagnosed with cancer and the economy just crashed and your business, you can't even afford your payroll right now. Think about what life could have been like because going back to what Wes said earlier, that you, you gotta live through someone else's experience. And I think you're a gift to humanity. And I say this right now because there's not a lot of people coming out of prison, one, who can articulate a message like you can, being able to communicate is a massive gift. And number two, if they had that gift, they're just not willing to. They're like, fuck, I learned all these lessons. I'm gonna live my life differently, but I'm not gonna help society. That, that's a big one that pisses me off. I'll get DMs every day of a fucking dumb fuck who just is like, oh, Wes, move on. Like you got out. It's over. Like go live a life with your wife and shit. I'm like, 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 like you, you dumb motherfucker, you selfish bitch. I'm like, I'm helping people. You don't see that. Like the point is, is it's not all about me. That's what you're doing. Have fun with that motherfucker. That, that's someone who's so low in life. I don't even mean to like talk shit because there's levels I can be understanding. And no, I was at his level at fucking 14. But the point is, is there's levels in life and he's just at the level where he just hasn't attained any success to see that that doesn't matter. And the only thing that's gonna matter is how you affect other people. How do I know this? The only fucking thing in my life that I'm ever affected by is other people. I've spent a lot of time alone. Do you think I ever got up and ruined my own fucking day once I was woke? Once I was mentally woke and spiritually aware and all this shit, do you think I ever got up and ruined my own fucking day? I never did. So then I knew that my job to live my best life and be as positive as I am and enjoy my days was to work on those around me so that they were comfortable with themselves. I was comfortable with myself. They weren't ruining my fucking day. So the point is, is, is it selfish of sorts? Yeah, but I, am I hooking them up? Yeah. Ain't that something? What, uh, what do you regret in life? I don't regret shit. I, I love everything I went through. I even went through that prison term, seeing it from a bird's eye view, like it was a movie. Like, fuck, dude, I'm gonna create the dopest shit off this. I knew it. I'm like, I know what I can do off this. And these motherfuckers are just living directly in it. Like, oh, this tray sucks. I don't wanna get up, like some bitch ass shit. And here I am, here I am. This, this is the power of your life right here. When you stand back in your fucking head, and all the shit you don't want to do that's going to get you where you want to go. You stand back and you remove your feelings from it. You watch yourself eating that food and you're like, yeah, motherfucker, no one will eat this shit like me. Yeah, this shit tastes like shit and I love it, dude. It's, it's getting me ripped. What's up? You don't sit there and involve yourself in the fucking meal. When you're working out, you're going to the gym early, you're watching it from outside. You're not directly in it like, I'm fucking tired. You're watching yourself from outside. You're like, look at that motherfucker. He's going straight to his goals. You can't stop that dude. That dude's on it. So the point being is step out, watch yourself, live your life from a bird's eye view, create your story, create that movie people would want to watch. Don't get so fucking submersed in the little fucking semantics of life. Don't let your feelings of every little event fuck with you. Obviously feelings involved with family, with loved ones, when it counts, when the feelings are good. But in moments of adversity, stand back and watch and see what it's creating. What makes you happy? What may, I don't even agree with happiness, first tell off. Me, tell me about that. I don't agree with happiness. I, I, it, it is, it's linked to expectation. So I mean, or there's a high and a low. So if, if I got way happy, well then guess what's gonna happen after? Way low. I'm, I'm just gonna feel low. I'm gonna be like, dude, I fucking made so much, it's so awesome. Oh, what now? So I mean, the point is I seek contentment. I seek inner peace. So I just seek that time. Like what I really look forward to is just laying there with my wife and just nothing, just no thoughts, no nothing, peace, you know? So seeking happiness is like, is, that's almost just looking for stuff externally, most of the part for most people, but I just, I don't even want the high and low. Goodness is uneventful. 
It does not flash, it glows. So, I mean, if are we looking for a glow or are we looking for that bang, you know? That bang and then everything falls down. But that glow, it's just steady, it's just steady. So, so why do you think people are looking for happiness then? Uh, I mean, they just haven't figured out that it's, happiness is just, it's, they just don't know what they're looking for. They don't know that they're looking for just contentment and inner peace. They're looking for everything to just feel right. They just, they're just looking, they, they're, they're working Monday through Thursday and they're like, Friday's here. They don't realize that fucking, then it just makes Monday worse again. I, I'm just all week, just steady, bing, just a steady incline, ding. Were you always that way? I've always kind of been that way, yeah. But I mean, I've just perfected it more and more. I actually used to live like the go out lifestyle and that type of shit. I never really did it for me though. I always knew that there was something wrong there. Sure. But you did it, and we talked about it earlier, yeah, yeah, so to yeah. get that external validation. Yeah, just, but, then, but then, like, regret being your guideline of life, I would always regret it, and then I'd be like, fuck, man, like, this is just bullshit. Like, so anyone who's regretting shit they're consistently doing, I don't give a, it's, give a fuck if it's food, alcohol, crack, or fucking speed, whatever the fuck. If you're regretting it after, that's your conscience, that's your guideline to tell you to expel that from your life, to live your best life. Your conscience is your hookup. I call it conscience congruency. If we could only walk in congruence with our conscience 24 seven, how far would we go? How good would our life be? It'd be pretty fucking easy. Yeah, ain't that the truth. Let's finish off with this question. If there was, there was a, a, a 25 year old person in front of you and said, hey, hey Wes, knowing what you know, how do I have a good life? How, how, do I, how do I have some significance and meaning? What's the one piece of advice you're gonna give this 25 year old that you're never gonna see again? make life hard and, and live a hard life and life will be easy. So if, if you've consistently put, or, or even the 90, 10 rule, 90% pleasure, 90% purpose, 10% pleasure, just literally, literally making fucking fuck man. Just, just working for purpose mainly. Mm -mm -mm. Purpose is the pleasure. Purpose is the pleasure. Wes, how do people find you? Everyone can find me on Instagram at Watson Fit. Watson Fit is my, my own corporation I'm CEO of, and uh, we, we do your training. We also do uh, my elite mindset coaching. So Watson Fit on Instagram. You can also go to GP Penitentiary Life, watch my videos on YouTube. Those are, um, that, I put my heart into all this shit. The way we do anything is the way we do everything. That's one of my credos. I have a few, Life Happens For Us is another one. And I mean, just, Grab those gems, let them run through your day, let them guide you, let your conscience guide you. And uh, GP Penitentiary Life on YouTube, watch and fit on Instagram, that's it. What should I have asked that I didn't ask? I think you hit everything. Those are, those are all my main things. Like the, my life up to now has been built off all those, those gems. And people are like in the comments in YouTube and in the Instagram and shit, they're like, thank you for these gems. Don't be a fucking consumer of motivation and quotes, quotes are known as the wisdom of the ages. Someone spent fucking a long time to figure out that sentence. Don't be fucking stupid. You're not gonna live long enough to make all the mistakes yourself. So let me help you. Here's this quote. It's coming from 150 AD from Marcus Aurelius, straight, not straightened. I mean, this was massive to me. Huge. But anyways, the point being is, fucking don't just be a consumer of motivation and trashing it because my my understanding is you'll fall under the law of diminishing into intent and it'll just be harder and harder for you to where now you almost have a vice of consuming motivation ain't that something Wes watson thank you for your time yeah brother. really appreciate you ladies and gentlemen thanks for watching this episode of the empire show if you like this episode and i know you did i want you to take a screenshot tag me tag Wes, and share it with your friends on social media leave us a five-star review and as always Dominate life. See you later.